we do here is on some level a microcosm of the macrocosmic reality of God. So if you think about us the same way that I think about my literary characters that I invent and I put into scenarios and they act out a reality, take that one level up and is it any different than what human beings on this world, uh, in this world are doing as it relates to God, their creator? But we can't be sure he's there, just like my literary characters that I created in Solving Cadence Moore, my mystery novel, they didn't know that I was writing them. As far as they were reality, they were in a self-contained reality that was contained on the, in the words and the pages of a book. They're fiction, but as far as they know, that's their reality. Um, as far as we know, this is our only reality, and we don't know what's a, a level above. So if, if God himself or God itself is essentially writing reality for the purpose of experiencing the entirety of itself, and perhaps even in a state of evolution itself, uh, getting, reaching its own full realization of perfection, let's have, you know, if, if you will. Uh, and I just wonder that why do people have the desire to write? Why do we have the desire to create? Is it because we are operating on that ma microcosmic level based on our own macrocosmic reality? That's as deep as I'm going to get on that subject, but I think that's really important for people listening to really think about. Did you ever see the show St. Elsewhere? Uh, I know the show. I have not watched it. The show went through. It was a hospital show. Denzel Washington and some other people, Hallie uh, Mandel and some other people, Ed Bagley Jr., were in it primarily and, and came along in the show and um, – it went through all the turmoil of a regular show. And in the last episode, the way it ended was the guy who was the chief of medicine and the guy who were in the hospital, uh, they're in this apartment, and uh, the older guy is his father, and he's got the same son who's autistic in the sh show. And the son is staring into a snow globe, and they're not dressed like doctors, they're dressed like average people. And... Uh, it's the hospital from the show in it, and he's shaking it up, and he says, what do you think he sees when he looks in that? And they were saying the whole show was in his mind. You know, It yeah. was really interesting. It's kind of like what you're saying. Yeah, no, it, it, it really is. And, and, and really, though, I was talking about the characters don't realize. Well, obviously, they're not real in the sense that you and I are real, that they could realize anything. But in, in the reality that they're built in, that show, you, know, you have to suspend disbelief to watch St. Elsewhere or any show. Uh, you have to suspend disbelief to read a book. So you are, in a sense, allowing for the notion that in, in, the, in the limited reality of this book, these are real people. These are real characters. And when you think about it up just one level from us, we're as ignorant as those characters on the page to what is writing us, to what is, is, is creating our reality. And I think, I think you said something really important there, uh, suspending disbelief. I was... Uh, once or twice a year, I'll do bit parts in acting just to annoy a friend of mine who's an actor. Uh, <laughs> so you can call yourself an actor, and he yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, and just uh, <laughs> and just kind of Kramer right in and just stumble into it. And uh, <laughs> and uh, usually I show up and uh, I wear what I want. I I I last time I parked right on the set and I shouldn't have, and I didn't realize that I got in the wrong line for food. I wear what I want, the wardrobe. I, I create my own character, and I just and then I finally just push the envelope by doing my own slow motion <laughs> <laughs> to make it more dramatic. Uh, but um, you know, I I I saw that um, I, I had questions about. They were saying, "Well, you're you're, you're taking a CAT scan." We, we were dropping a patient off in the hospital, and I was a helicopter pilot, and they're saying you took a CAT scan in a helicopter. So we can't do that. So that's not the way it's done. It's, and then finally the director was just like, suspend disbelief. Just <laughs> suspend disbelief. And, he, and uh, okay, when you put it that way, I'll turn it off. But right. don't, don't ask me to pretend that this nonsense is reality. You're telling me to turn the filter off or trying it, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to learn to do that in everyday life because I think that your, your education, your ego, your arrogance at an extreme – blocks you from learning new things yeah two things there uh you're you're uh if you didn't have the ability to suspend disbelief could you ever consider a new idea i don't think you could you'd, you'd be so stuck in the rigid parameters of what you already believe you wouldn't be able to let anything else in um you know 
So, so if you are not even able to do the simple act of suspending disbelief, you probably can't think very well because you can't allow for any uh, additional ideas. And you don't have to do it with everything, uh, 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 but do it with some stuff. Like I, I don't suspend disbelief. Yeah, you know, you get things that you do get rigid. That happens as life goes on. You know, mm-hmm. I like this flavor ice cream, and I'm not trying that flavor ice cream. I got the ice cream I like, or whatever. Yeah, but the things that you have carried with you into older age, like let's say the last half or the last third of a person's life, and you still carry those values and those opinions, that's because you've constantly put them to the test for 50 years. Right, and you know what works for you. But I think sometimes that you miss out on something like uh, every now and then uh, Pandora will introduce me to something I wouldn't have heard otherwise. Right. Or the GPS takes me a route that I didn't go before. Uh-huh. When I when I let it, you know, I let it take control and release a little control. And every now and then that's good. Every now and then that's good. Uh, uh, when you said the ego and the the education and and whatever, those things. I, I one thing I truly believe about life is that often our best and worst qualities are the same qualities. So the uh, like I have an obsessive nature about me, and it can produce depression and frustration and like self torture but at the same time that's the thing that drives me forward when no one else believes in what I'm doing and I have to supply all the belief myself that obsessive nature drives me forward same thing with ego same thing with education and and what you believe about yourself those things can help and hurt you you just have to know how to properly uh, either uh, break them in and control them or when to be wary of them yeah I mean I I jokingly say all the time my weaknesses are strong and my strengths get weak <laughs> you know uh, the uh, your, your 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 other projects uh, you're working with White Horse Media uh, right it's actually uh, it's White Horse Media Group LLC um, on Facebook and I, I'm being that specific because there's a couple other white horses out there so the one that you want to keep your eyes on is White Horse Media Group LLC um, is that run by Andrew Mount, right? He's the well, he is a, he is a very <laughs> high-level uh, personality within the White Horse group. White, White Horse is our umbrella company that uh, one of our big brands underneath that is the Ever-Evolving Truth, which I, uh, of course, reached out to Mark to get opinions on certain things, and he told me I was full of, uh, you know what, a couple times. Uh, but he was really helpful in just being a guy I could talk to and run things past and run my own ideas and theories past, and he was kind enough to work with me for many hours, uh, just setting me straight as, as, as he felt straight was. Um, so the Every Evolving Truth uh, is a podcast which I highly recommend everybody check out. Season three and four is coming up shortly. Um, we really hit it out of the park in season one. Uh, season two was its own adventure, which it will, will be, have to be another episode sometime uh, to, to, to give it justice. Um, so there, uh, I would say please, uh, the biggest thing for us right now, we just entered into a uh, publicity agreement with an Instagram, I call them the Instagram it couple, uh, called the Wild Kitties, at the Wild Kitties. Uh, and these girls are a, um, a young, talented, beautiful uh, lesbian couple who have a message they want to get out there that all love is beautiful, all love is okay, uh, love is love. And um, they have amassed an incredible following just putting up pictures of themselves and some minor content. So White Horse Media Group LLC is actually working with these girls, trying to get their content to the next level. So we're really excited about that. So please subscribe uh, on Facebook, um, share the content that we, that we put up. And if you're really hard up for entertainment, uh, go on Amazon and check out the mystery novel Solving Cadence Moore. Uh, and I will certainly appreciate it. It's five bucks on the Kindle. Okay, I give everybody the cheapest option. The, uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's good. The uh, it's interesting, and I'm not picking on I'm not picking on your girls because uh, I can I can say whatever I want, but I know darn well that I'm going to go look uh, <laughs> first chance I get. But I just don't I don't get it. You know, I don't understand this this intangible commodity of likes that's out there, this currency. Because well, you said it, you said the right word there. Yeah, it is yeah. currency. And yeah, they've created this currency, and I, I remember years ago there was a game called Ultima. And you could buy coins, you get these intangible, and it was all intangible. People were selling this stuff in the real world, and it's now become much more. And I just don't understand it. You can put something up. Uh, 
I, I can put up a, a picture. I remember there was a case that was a particularly difficult case that we solved really quick. And I, I think that I gave one of the best discourses and breakdowns of it that I've ever done because I was on point. And I was mainly on point because I was suffering from botched root canal pain, so I was just laser focused. And, uh, and I thought I was doing good. I had my karate chop hand gestures down. Everything was going good. And uh, they did a blurb of me and one of our dogs walking back and then urinating. I'm like, that's a, a dog can do anything. And it's like I can post the wisdom of Solomon online, and I will get the same seven friends that like it. You uh-huh. know? And But if I throw a puppy up there. It's disgusting. It, uh, it really is disgusting. Just, or, or, or two amazingly hot girls. You know? Well, that's a lot less disgusting. And, uh, but, no, but I'm, I'm I, I get your point. No, but I, I see people that are out there. That I, I have people I know that are attractive, and they're getting the likes because they're attractive. But it's like, how do you value the quality of that like? Because I'd rather have the likes of ten people I respect mm-hmm. than four hundred creepy guys. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, whatever. I, I think it comes down to this. I, you, you, I think you pretty much answered your own question because you referred to it correctly. You said. The likes, the subscriptions, the the follows, whatever the the platform calls it, essentially, it, it, so the, it is currency, right? If, if you could have gone back into the old days when Gone with the Wind came out, if you would have had the capacity to pull your potential viewing audience, and you could have seen the entire country, and you would have said, "Hey, we have this really powerful telescope." And every one of you that is that is thinking they might come to the theater and they might actually come see Gone with the Wind, please raise your hand. And if you'd have had that capability back then, every one of those hands raised would have been a signal to you as a marketer that, hey, this is a person who is probably interested enough to go see your movie. All right? So the likes and the follows and the subscriptions are a harbinger of the likelihood that that person will actually follow your content. And most of the people, like, you know, a, a brand like the Ever-Evolving Truth or a brand like White Horse Media uh, Group LLC, we are looking to get as many likes on as many platforms as possible, which uh, a tremendous dynamic couple like the Wild Kitties can certainly help us as we help them. But we all have, like the Wild Kitties have their own things they want to do. They have projects that mean something to them that they want help with, that they want to get out there. If getting 50,000 Instagram follows because you're putting up pictures that people are responding to, if that gets you to where you want to go, then I say wholeheartedly, let's embrace that if the end of the road is that the Wild Kitties get to produce the content they really want to produce. They get to make the film they really want to make. They, they get to put the art and the music out there that means something to them. Same thing for White Horse. We want to do films. We want to do... Um, all different kinds of content. We want to expand the podcast network. We want to have a publishing wing at some point. These are all big dreams, but without that base of the likes that you mentioned, Mark, without that currency, if you don't have enough of it, man, you're not playing. You don't even get to play at the table. But at what point do we sacrifice quality for currency? How all the time. That? All, all the, the time? I, I don't know how you balance You balance it by hopefully knowing that the right there's enough good people out there that are using the likes for the right reasons as nothing more than a show of hands of, hey, who's potentially interested in this and is it worth our time and effort to create? Uh, And if you have enough people like that who are viewing it like a currency, who are viewing it like, uh, hey, you got to pay to play kind of thing. But, I mean, there's some some of the greatest content uh, that I've ever seen in my life is out there on YouTube right now. Okay, there are some brilliant guys. Uh, Jordan Peterson's my favorite modern philosopher. He's absolutely dynamic and brilliant to listen to. He is incredibly popular. So popularity for him, he used it smartly. He got himself on the right shows. He said the right things out on the right shows, created some scandal, created some controversy. And now you'll never be able to put him back in the place that he was before. He is now permanently in um, in an upfront and center prestigious place where he can do exactly what he wants to do and get his message heard by the most people. So he's obviously found a balance. Uh, But again, it's you got to pay to play.